Hey Gundam Maniacs, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. This episode we're going to take a look at the Universal Century Timeline. Uh, myself, Talos Mobius, put our heads together, built out a timeline, and what we're doing is including a lot of different media that you can consume to kind of build out the lore and the world for Universal Century. And a lot of this is really just things that are in scope of Sunrise Productions. I know there's a lot of things like, you know, Gaia Gear that might be outside that. We're going to take a look at everything official, so yeah. Let's get started. All right, and we start with beginning of Unicorn, triple zero one. I don't say triple a lot, and that might be the only time I'm saying it, actually, but this is Laplace's incident. So if you've seen Gundam Unicorn, you know, there's a part of the beginning that kind of explains what happened in early UC, like the start of Universal Century, obviously with that triple zero one. All right, and then we get to 0055. Now, this one's pretty cool. Mars Colony Establishment. This is from the Advance of Zeta reboot, Mars Prehistory. So yeah, it's kind of incredible to think during the Universal Century timeline, while we're used to the Earth sphere and the happenings with Earth and the colonies, uh, there were colonizers going out to Mars, going out to Jupiter. Obviously, you know, from Zeta, we get a lot of uh, the Jupiter uh, faction with Scirocco kind of being folded in. But it's really neat that there's this establishment... Uh, at Mars that kind of uh, helps with future UC stories. All right, 0068 to 0079, this is Origin. So this is bumping right up against the original Mobile Suit Gundam. Origin is like the prequel of Star Wars. So it's it's going back uh, before, you know, what we all know, the main first story, and adding some more context, some more background information. We get to see a lot of Char or Casval, and it, it's very interesting. It fills in a lot of cool stories for the later uh, shows and manga. All right, and then we get to 0079. So this is where there's just a lot. There's really a lot here. So not everything I think has been covered. And a lot of it actually comes from the video games, which is really cool. So uh, 0079, this is where Mobile Suit Gundam takes place, where Amaro is, you know, first piloting the Gundam. But we also have Thunderbolt, which has an animation and a manga. The manga kind of dives in a little deeper, looking at some crazy scenarios that could possibly happen during Universal Century. We have MS Igloo, Blue Destiny, Missing Link, Reckon for Vengeance, the new one coming out soon, Aggressor, Code Fairy, Lost War Chronicles, we're Federation Hooligans. It's, it's very cool that there's so many side stories during the One Year War which is like 79. There's just so much going on, and it's really cool. And one thing I'll note, you know, I brought up Thunderbolt. Uh, you know, a lot of times people like to complain about, like, th things not lining up uh, accurately, like the canon. And, and the idea here is to understand that, I guess, within Japanese culture, as they're creating media and stories, um, they're not too worried about little details back and forth matching. Uh, you can still get a consistent story, and you get that out of Universal Century. All right, 0080, War on the Pocket, and Char's Deleted Affair. War on the Pocket, just a great condensed, small, pocket-sized story that's totally worth it. It's kind of a good starting point if you haven't gotten to Gundam. And then Char's Deleted Affair, something I have not looked into yet. That could be interesting. 0081, Battlefield Record. You know, there's a video game on the PS3. And what's cool about just the year 0081, it's like I would think so many things would happen after the one-year war, you know, before Zeta. We get a little bit of that with Stardust Memory, but that time right after the one year war what was going on because i you know just like uh with what we get from stardust memory and zeta you know we have a lot of zeonic engineers folding into anaheim electronics doing things for the federation i bet there's more stories that could be told during that time okay 0083 stardust memory another pretty awesome anime uh, the manga called rebellion kind of dives more into that time period in that story adds a little more to it so if you're a fan of stardust memory check out the manga all right, 0084, Advance of Zeta, The Flag of Titans, AOZ, The Traitor to Destiny, and Katana. Again, all really neat stories um, that actually happened right before uh, Zeta. And Advance of Zeta, that's a favorite of mine. I love the designs, and I love just the idea of, yeah, post-one-year war, there's this vacuum to fill of power. And at the same time, there are those in the Federation that want to be able to have as much weaponry as they can to, to fend off... Uh, any Xeon remnants. So I think it's kind of a neat uh, little balance of you have people that are part of the Federation that want to do good, and then you have those that know that they can get this hold of power and will use it for bad. Um, that's I think that's why I'm a fan of the Advanced of Zeta storyline. Okay, 0087, we've got Zeta, which is incredible. It's like one of my favorites. I feel like after the original 0079 uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, you know, Sunrise was like, well, Tomino... Here's a blank check, 
and Zeta was born. It's like all of, it's like peak Tomino, awesome designs are going on there, awesome animation, great music too. It's just awesome. And then Ironheart, another little uh, manga that I think came out in the late 80s. All right, 0088 and 0089, we have Double Zeta, Sentinel, and another Advance of Zeta, Mace of Judgment. So Double Zeta, it's another favorite of mine, even though, yeah, the beginning's rough. It's a little goofier, uh, kind of um, spends its time with these characters that are somewhat annoying, uh, but it it pays off in the end. And then we get to Sentinel, which Sentinel is on its own, just an amazing sort of, not just a story, but the designs that came of it. We had, uh, let me see if I can do this by memory, is it Hajime Kotoki uh, that started doing some mainline designs for Sunrise on the Gundam franchise and has continued to, to this day. And Sentinel kicked all that off. All right, 0089, Advance of Zeta reboot Gundam Inlay in Valpurgis. Wow, that's just a bunch of random words slapped together, but they're probably cool stories. All right, then we get 0090, Under Fake, The Return of Johnny Ryden in Double Fake. 0093, Shars Counterattack. I think that's one that we're all uh, familiar with. You know, it's the movie uh, that takes place after the original Gundam Zeta and Double Zeta, created by Tomino. And then 0094, we have Across the Sky. 0096, Gundam Unicorn and Last Sun. Gundam Unicorn, pretty amazing. It's like what I would call the uh, sequel trilogy that we know of from Star Wars, except done right, where it uh, it doesn't it just, it, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of fan service, but it's not in your face. It's like pulled back. But also it introduces this story with the Laplace, that uh, box that I uh, talked about earlier, because uh, I guess, yeah, double O or triple O one is when that event first started. And I think it's pretty neat because I feel like it's kind of a retcon, but you don't even need it for everything else to still occur. So it's almost like an interesting self-contained story. But within that, we get a lot, a lot of deep just background information and references to prior stories in what I'm calling the Amaro and Shar saga. Although, is there another name for that? Because I'm thinking Skywalker Saga. But what would we call One Year War up into Hathaway? All right, 0097, we have Narrative. I, I think that's a, a pretty good movie. It's a little slow in parts as it explores what these children are going through as cyber new types and new types. Uh, but it does really neat things that we see in manga a lot where we have sort of the soul, the essence, or the AI, that sort of idea embedded into a mobile suit. So the mobile suit's just kind of on its own. Uh, a very interesting story. 0099, we have Moon Crisis, and uh, 0105 is Hathaway. All right, so I consider the, the last two slides kind of like the, yeah, the Amaro and Char saga sort of timeline, right? And I think once we get past Hathaway, things change. Now, there might be more in Hathaway that we discover. Uh, there's some potential links with Victory, but let's, uh, let's take it from here. Uh, we have a single... Zero, uh, 111, that's F90. And then we have 122, form the report, 0122. And 0123, we have F91. Now, F91 is an amazing movie. It's like the first time with Tomino that we're making a, a whole other Gundam story set in Universal Century, but it doesn't have anything to do with the Char and the Amaro saga from before, which is pretty interesting, but it still works. In fact, I think it has the best sort of mobile suit uh disaster scene. You know, movies have their disaster scenes. Gundam tends to have these disaster scenes that occur to kind of set the stage of kind of the the situation at hand and the, the death that can occur. F91 does an excellent job and it has amazing animation. 0133, we have Crossbone, Crossbone Skull Heart. 0136, Crossbone Steel 7. 0150, Crossbone Ghost. Lots of Crossbone, and this is actually very popular. Uh, not only was a lot of manga of Crossbone, and we get to even see Judo Ashta from Double Zeta in there, uh, but also a lot of the model kits and robot spirits are really awesome. And this is like a fan favorite, other than Sentinel. I don't know if it's more Sentinel or Crossbone that fans want an anime of. In 0153, we get Victory Gundam. Uh, this would be, I guess, the the last Tomino show within Universal Century. And again, while I mentioned uh, this stuff doesn't really deal with the, the Shar and Amaro saga, there are some potential links to uh, Shar through the protagonist of Victory. So Erwin, I don't know if it's true or not. I, I looked at it a bit in the past, but no one really talks about it. 
Again, could be true, but, but whatever the case, it is kind of a self-contained story. There's not really a threat of Xeon in this case anymore, and there's kind of different unique designs. Uh, we also have a Halo ring as a super weapon. I like Victory. 0169, 0170, Crossbone Dust, Crossbone X11, can't get enough Crossbone. 0222, G Savior Sound Cinema. Okay, now we're getting into the real stuff, are we? 0223, G Savior. So, G Savior, live action movie came out in 2000. A lot of people just default hate it, and it doesn't get talked about often, but there are those people online that I found that do like G Savior. It has a great design. I love the design of the G Savior uh, mobile suit, but. Also, I don't think the live action movie is bad. It's a it's a nice, warm watch. It's inoffensive. The acting is decent enough because it's very interesting to see the main character, Mark, go through what he does because he's deciding to change his life and turn on the system, uh, even his, I think it was a girlfriend. Uh, but it was a very interesting story. I thought not too much Gundam action going on because this was 2000s. They only had limited scenes that they can use then the CGI, which is stuff from like uh, Star Trek Next Generation, I don't know, Babylon 5, I'm just naming late 90s uh, sci-fi TV shows. I think it's unfortunately stuck because of the way it looks. If you didn't, if you weren't around for that, you, you might not get it. In fact, if I wasn't around for that time period of shows and movies and special effects, I might not even get it. All right, and then we have 0653. Yeah, that's right, 0653. Mentioned in Victory Gundam Project Exodus. What could that be? Maybe I'll get to that here in a second. All right, I wanted to create sort of a visual timeline on this. This is what I'm calling, you know, early UC. So this is basically anything before the 100s, although I know Hathaway creeps up into that, and there could be other stories that also um, are part of that Char and Amaro saga that are affected. But just... You know, for the matter of us getting an idea of looking at the scale and scope of everything, we've got triple zero one beginning of unicorn, and then we can see there's some big gaps in terms of the stories that are told. Yeah, once we get to the middle of this early UC part, there's a lot of stories, lots of them. A lot of it is because this takes place during the pivotal moments of that Amaro and Shar saga, even though a lot of it doesn't have to do with Amaro and Shar. It's more of Amaro using the RX-78-2 in Shar's maneuvering through Xeon that kind of propelled the world into, or the Earth sphere into what it is at that point. So hopefully from this visual, you can kind of get an idea of all the craziness that happens all clustered around uh, in around the same time periods of like about 20, 20 or something years. All right, and so for late UC, we're starting there with Hathaway, moving to F90, and then you can kind of see where, it, it, they're, they're more of just scattered about like the rest of the stories, you know, getting into victory, getting to crossbone, and then G Savior, but also ends with the 0653 that I talked about earlier. Like, what is that? And to look at that real quick, so, Kamui Gian uh, is a fictional character from the Mobile Suit Victory Gundam Outside Story manga. It's a human, new type, a female. Uh, affiliated with the Zanskare Empire and Jupiter Fleet. Let's get some history. A young pilot of the Zanskare Empire's new type unit under the command of Scale Sarpris. That's a name. She is rescued by Grace Stoke after she and Uso Erwin are attacked by the Zong. She bears some resemblance to Shakti Karin after successfully defeating the colony against Scale's attack with Uso. She leaves the solar system. She leaves the solar system with Grace Stoke in the interstellar spaceship colony Dandelion to Proxima Centauri, which would be colonized in UC-653. So... An official canon, or not canon, whatever you like, of uh, Universal Century. We have it where uh, people have taken interstellar voyages out to colonize uh, other places outside of the solar system. That's really neat. That's like far-reaching sci-fi and very cool how that's even mentioned. That's a very out there sort of piece of lore for Universal Century Gundam. Talos and I were thinking about how to put this together. They kind of show when things happened. Hopefully that can help as a visual aid, but then you can look through there and find different stories, different types of media that you want to consume to get more world building at a Universal Century. We have Requiem for Vengeance coming soon. That's going to add even more lore and story, so I can't wait for that. What are some other maybe Sunrise lore and story that hasn't been brought up? Yeah, feel free to comment below. I know I'm always thinking of um, Gaia Gear, although that is 
kind of unofficially uh, part of Universal Century. So I didn't really include it here, but that's something I'm totally down to do a deep dive of. But yeah, any other cool little uh, interesting bits you want to add, feel free to do so below. Also, this timeline that I created uh, with Talos will be available for supporters with the rest of the technical documents. Uh, reach out to me if you're having a hard time coming across that. And then, um, and then that just about does it. That was a lot of fun. If you haven't, please subscribe. If you think this is a cool video, please give it a like. Also, check the links in the description for ways you can support the channel and all the people that have been helpful in Gundam Explained being what it is today. That is linked below as well. But until next time, we'll talk later.